of course, what are we going to have to solve for here? It's the only thing that would be difficult to solve for. A, B, C, D, or X. Um, X. Right. So how do we solve for X? Need to get X by itself. I'm sorry, what? Need to get X by itself. Well, that's definitely going to be the last step. In other words, when I get to there, yes. How do we get to there? I have no clue. Gather like terms. It's an expression you may not hear a lot, but that's the secret. You always gather like terms. In other words, ga gather anything that has x on it on the left side of the equation and everything else on the right side. So if I do that, what's this second line right there going to be? dx minus dx equals c minus a. And now the key is what? I'm trying to solve for x. Very important step that you have to see. You have to understand what to do here. Always think factoring. Okay, so you need to factor out an x. Okay, right. which leaves? b minus d. And as you're doing that, always multiply those back together again to make sure you did it right. Yeah. In fact, that's maybe the most important thing about doing algebra. And I'm serious. If you want to do algebra accurately, then you should always be checking. A, B, C. Always be checking. And what that means is after you've factored it, Make sure that when you multiply that times that, you get what you started with. And you do. Now, what's the final answer? Um. How do I go from this step to this step? B minus D is a coefficient of X. In, okay. in other words, yeah, it might be helpful to write to it. To divide like it? This. Yes, exactly. But the main thing, the only reason people don't see this is because it's not written like this. If I'd have written it like that, you wouldn't have any problem at all, right? Yeah. You'd have divided by the coefficients. So that's the answer, but make sure you see that when the coefficient follows the variable, you, it's still the coefficient. So you still have to divide by the coefficient. All right. Solve for x. Same process. So factor out an x, so you get. Yeah. Well, first parentheses. of all, you got to gather everything on the right side. Okay. Okay. So. Or the left side. X. It is on the left. So x minus x minus bx. And you factor the x. So what do I have next? A minus b. Ah, uh, remember what you're doing when you're factoring. 
what you're doing when you're factoring an x out is I'm dividing that by x, I'm dividing that by x, and I'm dividing that by x. Okay, so what do you get when you do all three of those? What's this one? Okay, so a minus 1 minus b. Very important. And now what the last step is always the easy one. Divide by a minus 1 minus b. You got it. These are actually some great algebra problems. I was looking in my Algebra 2 book, which is pretty sure the book you're going to use next year. And I don't know. I, I've done a lot of Algebra 2 tutoring, and I love these questions they're presenting us right here. These are the kind of problems people have problems with. So if we can get you past this level of difficulty, you're going to be in great shape. And this year, I want you to keep me apprised of your grade. There's, right. there's no way I want you getting a C or a D in algebra. I, I, I'm not sure what happened last year, but either we need to work more often or harder or do something. But let's not let your grades slip. There's no reason for it. You have math skills, Cole, and you just have to, we have to work with them in the right order. Mm -hmm. It's the first step here. Multiply the B plus CX. That way you can... What's the next line? Um, so AX equals... B e plus CX. And the next line? Subtract the CX equals, so it's AX minus CX equals B. Then factor the X, you get X A minus B. Then divide by A minus C. Perfect. X equals B over A minus C. Perfect. All right. I'm confident you can solve simple equations. Now let's talk about systems of equations. I hate systems of equations. I know you do, because only because it's been a full year since you've had to do them. In other words, there's not very many geometry problems that require you to solve a system of equations. So you got to go all the way back to Algebra 1 towards the end to be able to solve these. Now, let's talk about the two methods. Substitution and elimination. Remember those words? Mm -hmm. What are we going to use for this problem? And what determines what we should use? Which method? It's going to be substitution. Okay. Here is, if the problem read this, oh man, come this happens always at the most inappropriate time. If the problem read this, man, my, just a second. I'm trying to figure out what happened to my cursor. Uh, can't write with my mouse. I can get my mouse to read, but I can't get my cursor to read. Now let me close, close it out and open it up again. It's the only thing I know what to do when this happens. Wow. Okay, let me unplug and plug back in again. That's my next solution. 
Uh, almost worked. I almost can see my mouse. I'm going to get this yet. Hold on. There we go. If the problem read this, you want to use substitution whenever one of the equations is fully defined for one variable. Do you see the difference in what I've circled and what's in the top left? Yeah, I, okay. was it, what I'm, what I'm trying to, I, the reason I said substitution is because when I tried, when I looked at the problem you wrote in elimination, it didn't work. Well, substitution would work fine, is all I've done is rewritten the second equation so that it looks like that. Okay. In other words, the second equation on the right is the same as the second equation on the left. It's just I've written it solved for x, whereas in the first time I wrote it, this is called standard format. Standard format is some ax plus some by equals some c. That's standard format. If you want to call it substitution format, then I would have x equals c minus by all divided by some a. In other words, the decision as to what to use, substitution or elimination, needs to be made based on whether one of the equations is solved already, as opposed to standard format. If you have standard format, which we do in this case. In other words, I'm going to use elimination here. Because my two equations are in standard format, I have my x's and my y's on the left, I have a number on the right. So, it's called elimination for a reason. What are we going to do to eliminate a variable? add the two equations. Okay, let's talk about that because not, not everybody remembers that you can do this. If I have two equations like this over here on the right, I can add or subtract those equations always. So it doesn't matter what a plus b if I add the two equations, this is what I get. You can always do that. In other words, I can always add them or I can always subtract them. I can't multiply or divide them, but I can always add equations or subtract equations. And that's key when you're doing elimination. What do I need to do to get rid of a variable? Add it. Add the I, could, I could actually do either one. Notice that I could add them and I'm going to eliminate y. Or I could subtract them and eliminate x. And it doesn't really matter which one you do. You want to do the easiest thing. Well, clearly adding is easier than subtracting, right? So, what's the next line after I add these two to things together? X equals six. Not x. What's x plus x? Oh, two x equals six. Two x equals six. It's actually two x plus zero y equals six. So x equals three. Now, how do I solve for y? Well, so input. The x value is one of the equations, and then solve. So if you put the top one, 
Okay, so let's do the top. Plus y. Three plus y equals two. What is y equal to? Negative one. So there's your solution right there. And you always have to solve for both variables, but you have to solve for them one at a time. Okay. Now, let's go back here for a moment and change this second equation into what I had written previously. X equals 4 plus Y. Same second equation. But now, because I have one of the equations completely solved for one variable, and it doesn't matter which variable, I'm going to use substitution. What's the next line if I'm using substitution to solve these two equations? 4 plus y plus y equals 2. So we have 4 plus y We have 2y equals minus 2. We have y equals I minus agree. 1. And once you solve for y, it actually becomes pretty easy to solve for x because you're going to go into that one right there. Mm -hmm. And x equals 4 plus a minus 1. So x equals 3. So I get the same solution, which I have to do. When you have two equations and two unknowns, there's only one solution. Well, most of the time, um, there's only one solution. But I guess what I'm trying to point out here is, is that which method you use, whether it's substitution or elimination, kind of depends on how they are giving you the equation. Another one. Substitution or elimination? Elimination. Okay. Add or subtract? That's the only two choices. In other words, once you've chosen elimination, then you have to determine whether you got to add or subtract. Okay. Subtract those two equations. What do you get? You switch the order. No, you're just subtracting. Switch, subtract every term from the term above it. So 2x minus 2x is 0x. What's plus y minus 3y? Minus 2y equals negative 3. Equals what? Negative 3. So y equals? Um, 1.5. 3 halves. Every one of my students wants to convert everything to decimals. You know what? I've decided that you're always better off leaving it as a fraction. And that will apply through trigonometry. Trigonometry is all about ratios. It's not about, I don't ever want an answer that looks like that. I mean, sometimes I do. It doesn't matter. It's the same number. But... Just remember that you're always better off with a proper fraction, excuse me, an improper fraction than you are a number with a decimal. Kind of remember that. In other words, you always want to leave your answers like that. You would never want to leave an answer like that. In other words, you always want to simplify them. But this does not need to be changed to 
Substitution or elimination? Elimination. Add or subtract? Add. What's the next line below the vertical, my horizontal line? 0x plus 6y equals 6. X equal to. So you're using the top top equation. It would equal. No, not you don't use the top equation. Um, now you can use either equation. They're both the same, actually, or pretty close to the same. So two x plus three times three. one equals zero. So, 2x equals 3 equals 3 halves, negative 3 halves. Yeah. Okay. See, you didn't mind systems of equations. Um, well, just whenever they were taught to me, they didn't ever make sense. Well, the biggest thing is you just have to decide whether you're going to use substitution or elimination first. Now, they can get a little bit harder. Here, I'll give you one that's a little harder. The key is to know whether it's in standard format or not. If it's in standard format, then I'm always inclined to use elimination. I just think it's the easier method. Substitution or elimination? Elimination. Notice that adding or subtracting does not eliminate a variable. So I have to do something first. Remember the goal. We're definitely going to use elimination. And whether I use addition or subtraction doesn't really matter. Got it. I got it. So you can multiply the top equation by 2 and then subtract it. Perfect. Now, when these get a little more complicated, I tend to like to number my equations so that I don't get confused. This is equation number 1 multiplied by 2. Remember, you have to multiply every piece of it by 2. Yep. Okay. Now, I can cross that one out. And in order to subtract these, it's actually a little easier if I put equation number 2 below. Makes the math a little easier. Didn't change equation 2. I just rewrote it below equation 1 because I want to subtract. When you so you get 7y equals 21. Divide by 7. Subtract. Y. Subtract. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, be 14, so y equals 2. Correct. Pretty comfortable that you know how to solve for x. And finally, let's do this one real quick. Elimination or substitution? Hold on. I, I screwed this up royally. Hold on. This is what I meant to write. Okay. So we're going to use elimination because both of them are in standard format. Mm -hmm. That's equation 1. That's equation 2. 
What do I have to do? In other words, it's, it's right now, if I add or subtract, I do not eliminate anything. So, so you, you always can... have to figure out what you can do so that you can eliminate a variable. So you can multiply equation 1 by 2 and equation 2 by 3. So you'd end up with equation 1 being uh, 4x minus 5 equals 10. And what's the equation? The second equation would be 9x plus 6y equals 30. Now, just I, I, I draw a line through them only so not to confuse. Um, now it's easy. I'm going to add them. So I get 13x equals 40. I can solve for x. I made this one up. That's why the strange answer. And then now, when you've done something like that and it goes to solve for the other variable, always use the easiest equation you have. What's the easiest of those four equations that I'm going to use to solve for y? Remember, I've solved for x. I got x equals 40 divided by 13. I have the equation 1. Right? Yeah, the one that's got the smallest numbers. In other words, these equations now have bigger numbers. And this equation has a 10 on it. So let's use this equation here, where the only numbers we have are a 2, a 3, and a 5. And just substitute x and solve for y. All right, that's good stuff. You're going to start off Algebra 2 with a bang, trust me. Yeah, I'm feeling very confident about next year. Yeah, no, you should. These are, these are so much more easy to me than they ever were. Well, I think you're a lot like me. You, you like Algebra better than Geometry. Um, you're not going to have any problem with Algebra 2 at all. So, good. Cole, I'll talk to you next Monday. Talk to you next Monday. Bye-bye. Okay.